remember how uh, Imagine came to be written? Well, it's um, something that he wanted to write, and uh, we were in that mood of, you know, trying to sort of um, not just uh, be songwriters in Ivory Tower or something like that, but try to communicate on that level. And so it was to create a song that would influence the world with that vision that he had. But because of that, therefore, he had to use very simple language and very simple chords. And, and I think, you know, he managed it. So that would have been a deliberate decision by John? To yes, simple. you know, yes. Because, you know, I hear these days comments from other composers, you know, like, oh, 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 it's so simplistic or something like that. Well, that's how I felt about pop and rock anyway. I mean, so I, I understand that feeling. But then, um, you know that, uh, <clears throat> uh, for instance, uh, as a politician, I understand that Reagan was a very astute politician in the sense that he wanted to use words that are all very simple so people understood it. And when he had, when he had used some words that are a little bit complicated, the message didn't go through so well. And it was immediate kind of effect, you know, the difference between using some heavy words and not using, you know. And I think John, as, um, as a composer and as a kind of communicator to the world, uh, almost as a politician, he understood those things. And so that Imagine was written in a way that uh, is very understandable. So he could have written a more complex song. Of course he could, you know. I mean, he was in one of the best composers of our age. He knew all the tricks that all the composers would know, you know. But this one, he wanted to make sure that it was simple enough for it to really communicate to the whole wide world. It was specially composed that way for people to be able to sing. And it was for the people, not for the, the few intellectuals or the critics. He wasn't trying to please any critics, or music critics or anything. He wanted to communicate directly to the people. So here's your song, you know. And uh, so there are many songs that uh, people who could not write their own songs for some reason got the songs from him. And they're singing that. And it's beautiful, I think. Is that why you think people found him so influential? Well, the, the, yes, obviously, he touched their souls. And uh, I think that uh, music in the beginning was somehow um, <clears throat> composed for the lords who asked them to compose the, the music or whatever. And, uh, you know, it was a privileged thing in a way, you know. But he was saying that uh, he feels that he was a traveling minstrel and going around, you know, with a guitar or the banjo or whatever and, and singing the song in the corner of the street, you know, that, that sort of thing, you know. And um, he felt that he was communicating on that level, not to the privileged few. But is it really true that you didn't know him and you didn't know the Beatles when you met? Well, I heard about the Beatles as a social phenomenon, like I heard about Elvis Presley, but, you know, like, um, we were into jazz or something like that, you know, more jazz and classic. And, and uh, Elvis Presley, Beatles coming after that was a phenomenon that was kind of in the distance. And uh, when I was in Japan, in Tokyo, <clears throat> I saw a tiny article like this in a huge newspaper, like a tiny article. It was saying uh, these mop top boys with the strange haircut are now getting very popular. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. But I mean, it, it was in passing. I didn't think anything of it, really. Yeah. So your own musical tastes were more towards classical music and, and jazz? Not even jazz so much, but classical, yes. And um, yes. Well, my father's influence, I think, he was into Schoenberg and Berg and all those sort of 12-tone writers, you know. And uh, I think I was introduced to Schoenberg uh, by my father. And, and when I met John, I felt, okay, here's this guy who was writing these songs. And he kind of showed me like Yellow Submarine and a few other songs, lyrics, you know. I thought it was kind of simplistic, you know. <laughs> and 
then it, that, it just occurred to me that I was look, I was reading Yellow Submarine. It just occurred to me that it was like a surreal poem, poem, and uh, from that angle, like a surrealist poetry, you know, it made quite sense. I mean, yellow is the color of light. Submarine, the subconscious, is moving in the water, which is the emotion, you know. And so it's fantastic, and it's saying that we all live in a submarine, a yellow submarine. I, I thought that was incredible, you know, bringing light into your subconscious or something like that. And, and uh, these guys are kind of singing to uh, the, the white public, you know, and the, the, the songs are being played in, played on radio and uh, phonographs at home and all that, and all over the world. And it's an incredible, powerful thing to do with a surrealist poem. You know, and it's, that, that's how I interpreted it then. And then suddenly I understood what they were doing, though maybe I suspected that they weren't that aware of what they were doing, but it was just a very powerful thing happening there, you know. Yes, exactly. But Yellow Submarine, in the way you describe it, uh, it presumably isn't something that, that the Beatles would have had in mind. The no, surrealism. I'm sure they didn't, but the point is, so what is it? It's almost like a blessing that, you know, it came through them or something, you know, in terms of maybe uh, acting as a, a medium, you know, something like that, you know. And I, I really felt that it was an incredible kind of um, uh, message just coming through them. And they might not be really... Uh, aware of the total impact, but it doesn't matter, you know. And so I kind of respected all that suddenly. But still I felt that the, the music, uh, uh, the, the structure of music, the form of music was a little bit too simplistic. The chords and, the, you know, the beat is always the same, you know. <laughs> one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know. So, oh, okay. But then suddenly, that's another thing I realized. Oh, that's the heartbeat. I mean, a heartbeat is simple. I mean, it's not like, you know, the Schoenberg, Pierre du Lunaire, you know, like uh, every bar is a different uh, rhythm or something like that, you know? So it goes with a heartbeat. It goes with the beat of the universe. Beautiful, you know? So suddenly I understood the power of it, you know? I mean, that was the power of rock. But I thought, it's great. And I fell in love with that, you know? Was that the kind of conversation you would have with John about things like that? Yes, well, you see, the thing was, of course, he was the master. <laughs> he was the master of rock, you know. And I, I could say that I, I was privy of um, the classical and the avant-garde kind of field, you know. So together, when we met, I'm giving him a few recipes that, you know, I gained through my experience, and he's giving me some recipes that he knew. Of. And together, we kind of exchanged musical recipes, you know. Uh, the secret recipes that we gain, or, and it was very strong, that was very powerful. And we were totally interested in that, you know. So it wasn't just sort of like, um, oh, let's hop into bed kind of relationship. It was, uh, that was just by the way. And there was so much else that we shared. Did you begin to understand the, mu the Beatles music better then afterwards? Well, I mean, I was only understanding as a social phenomenon, and then I was starting to th think, well, what is the power of it? Where is the power, you know? And of course, the obvious is that the, all four of them are kind of um, attractive people, etc. you know, on camera, <laughs> and very tactful, extremely, I mean, you know that, you know, their public relation was, like, perfect, you know, that kind of thing. But I think... I was more interested in the real, the fundamental power, you know, that, that could really go so far all over the world, you know. And that was the beat and the poetry. And the poetry, which was something that came through them, it's, and it was very interesting. It wasn't just on the level of, you know, uh, <clears throat> a pop song, just to make people feel uh, feel good, feel good music, you know. Poetry was quite interesting, I thought. 